twisted, off-kilter pyramid, almost in flux. The new extension of the Tate Modern melds with London's modern glass office towers and luxury apartments. But it stands out because of its explicit use of bricks, 300,000 of them, in keeping with the architecture of the power station that once stood on this site. The Swiss architects Herzog and de Maron transformed the space into a museum 20 years ago and have now built upon their ideas. So it was clear that uh, this area will be commercially developed with a lot of glass towers and we felt it's very important that this uh, building relates strongly to the original power station and the brick felt is the much better material um, through this process. But, um, you know, for us, architecture uh, and developing project is really a journey. It's a, it's a dialogue, it's a process. It's not one idea or one sketch in the very be beginning. Originally, the architects had toyed with a steel and glass casing, but bricks turned out to be not only more elegant, but less expensive. The extension still cost over 300 million euros to build. But now Tate Modern has 10 extra floors. Half of them will house more galleries for traditional artworks. But some will be devoted to performance art, which is becoming ever more popular. The architects have converted the former oil tanks in the basement for this purpose. Artists love unusual spaces. They're not always the easiest to work in, but you know the history of artists working in reclaimed industrial spaces has informed the way we kept these spaces raw. And they have this quality of being able to experiment in them, which I think the more polished galleries upstairs feel more about display. Gallery director Francis Morris feels that the close collaboration with the architects is the key to its success. She envisioned brightly lit rooms that invite art lovers to explore the gallery. The Turbine Hall remains the Tate Modern's largest space, but now it's become the central juncture of the various rooms and galleries. They're Swiss, we're British, but we speak the same language when it comes to buildings. And I think one of the things that they have brought to that conversation is the importance also of these common spaces, spaces people walk through to get from gallery to gallery, the places people want to rest between restaurant and bookshop, the places people want to hover at the entrance. And I think that's a very successful part of this building, that the spaces outside the galleries are also very rewarding. Herzog and de Maron have achieved international renown with their designs that are both functional and aesthetic. Like perforated steel curtains in a Munich shopping arcade, the facade of Basel's new exhibition hall, the steel girder bird's nest for Beijing's Olympic Stadium, and the luminous exterior of Munich's Allianz Arena. Joining this parade of triumphant ideas is now the Tate Modern's Pyramid Extension. We very much treat every project very specifically at that project, for this site, for this program, for this client. And um, that's what's driving us, that's what's interesting for us. We don't have any preconceived ideas and we don't have any style. We don't like organic over rectangular, simple over very um, eclectic. We, we, we embark on a journey and that, that journey is custom tailored to the program, to the location, to the community, to the people, to the client. The gallery has christened its spectacular extension, the Switch House, in the spirit of the building's origins as a former power station. More projects are in planning for the site. Things are churning full steam ahead into the future for the new Tate Modern.